Hi friends, I have the September and the October up crate boxes here, so let's open them. If you're new here, my name is Sally, I'm a mixed media artist in Australia. And while I'm going to unbox both of these, I'm going to focus mostly on box 50, the October box. I already know what's inside and I'm super excited to get into these suppliers and, and make this kind of artwork and take you through the whole entire process. So let's go. Okay, so I've got 49 and 50 here. Now they both came in the mail like this. So I don't know what happens on the way to Australia, but we're going to open up both of these today and see what's inside. All right, 49's up crate, which is the September box. We got paint, Windsor & Newton fine liner, 0 0.8 in black. Ooh, nice. It's so light. Nice. We have a brush, little flat edged brush. Number six, and we have five Liquitex acrylic paints. I've been using a bit more acrylic lately. Uh, I really like the way it performs. I get frustrated with the fact that it dries so fast and I can't reactivate it because I'm used to using watercolors and gouache and before that like I studied as an oil painter and you have so much time to work with oils as well so it's definitely uh forcing me to work a little bit faster <laughs> this color palette is beautiful I don't actually have any acrylics in these colors so I'm looking forward to I, d I have used Liquitex acrylics before and they're beautiful so I'm stoked to add these to my collection what else have we got? Mixed media paper. Ooh. Oh, it's like a block. Okay. Three hundred and twenty GSM. That is some thick paper. And a print. This is very graphic. And was that upside down? And like I did with the last unboxing, I will swatch out all the supplies and while I'm swatching, I'll jump online and give you all the info about everything in the voiceover. And our sticker sheet. So that's box 49 looking forward to making something with that and what I'll do now is I'll unbox box 50 which is the most current box October and I'll make two pieces of art for this video so let's get stuck into the next one all right box 50 Now I already know what's in this. I've been seeing people posting about it and I have been wanting to get back into cyanotype printing for ages. I haven't done it since I was in school and I am so stoked to have this to experiment with. So these say part A and part B. 
this set contains enough chemistry to make approximately 15 8 by 10 prints. Amazing. So we've got lots to play with there. So we've got the solutions. We have a brush. We have a gel pen. Karen Deco gel. We have a, a waterproof marker, fine liner, green, and we have some little bulldog clips. So that's our supplies. So just if you don't know, uh, cyanotype is, it's like a cameraless photography technique and you only need water to develop it and yeah it's really cool it uses uv light to develop the images and yeah it's so sick and i'm really excited like if you've never heard about it or played with it i'm really excited to show you this because they look really cool and like i was saying before i studied my major was painting but my minor was photography and we did um, play around with cyanotype printing in my photography course. That was a really long time ago, though. So I'm I've been thinking about getting back into it um, because it's just a really like I love the effect of it and the way they look. So yeah, excited. It's really cool to have a subscription box putting in something a little bit different then you know like I love getting paints and pens and that sort of thing but having something new to play around with is really cool and I, I like the upgrade boxes for that because I think even one box we got like a, a whole fabric tote bag with fabric paints and things like that and it's just something a little bit more unusual and so you can try new things so yeah I really like that I had someone in my last video comment about whether they thought the upgrade was was worth it because they were also in Australia and I didn't I forgot to mention in my comment that the upgrade boxes do have some sort of more maybe like unusual supplies like it's not just paints paint markers pencils that sort of thing um, so yeah, for that reason, the upgrade would sort of push me over the edge to, if I had to choose maybe just one, it might be this one for that reason as well. So hope that helps if you're also watching this video. <laughs> and then we have the print. So this is showing us how we can create the image and then use the pens to add some little details. Artist of the month. We have a cute little sticker sheet. I'm so excited about playing with this. And eight sheets of watercolour paper, 300 GSM. Fun! So that's what's in both the boxes. We've got acrylic paints and we have all the fixins to make some cyanotype prints so let's go so this mixed media paper is tree free it's 100 percent hemp and there's five pieces of paper in this pad and it's so beautiful and thick this is going to be great with watercolor and we have five colors of the liquitex acrylic we've got cerulean blue hue blue gray light pink brilliant purple and red oxide and I just thought that I would swatch them out just so we can really see what the colors look like this the Liquitex basics acrylic range is a medium body and they're all light fast as well so uh, there is 72 colors in the full range I absolutely love this color palette it's beautiful so I swatched out all the colors individually and then I just started mixing some of the shades and I love everything that I came up with and I only mixed two colors at a time but I think that that you could get a lot of range from these five colors 
and I'm just using the brush that was included in the box, which is the size six Colbrul, I think, <laughs> uh, which is a synthetic brush. So good for all your watercolors and acrylic squash, that sort of thing. So these are the colors that I made from this color palette. And then we have our Winsor & Newton Fine Liner, uh, which is a water resistant ink. So you can use it with all your paints and it's not going to reactivate. Now time for our cyanotypes. So the mixture, it's a powder. So you need to fill your bottle with water. Fill each bottle with water. And then give them a good mix. So shake them up. 24 hours later. And the next day, your mixture's ready to use. So you don't want to be working in a really bright space because the photo will develop with UV light. So as you can see here, I, I put way too much of the solution on my palette. You only need probably like half a teaspoon, I would suppose. I used a cap full. So you just mix equal parts of both solutions together and then paint your solution onto your watercolor paper. So just, yeah, make sure you're not working in a really bright space. I thought I would use one full A5 sheet and then do a couple of smaller prints as well. So I just cut the sheet into two to make two A6 sheets. And I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that you can use your cyanotype solution. And you need to pop them into a cupboard to dry. So all the way away from the light. Now I used to be a live music photographer, so I'm going to show you how you can use one of your photographs and turn it into a negative. So you choose your photo, turn it into black and white, and then create a negative. And then we're going to print that onto some transparent paper, which I just sort of had some lying around. So when you print that out, then you have a negative. Now I used to do this from like actual old film negatives, but this is a way that you can do it now with digital cameras. Then I went out into my garden and picked some leaves because we're going to use those uh, as little templates as well. So I just chose some leaves. These ones have like little three leaves together. They're really cute. And I loved the shape of this one as well. So I grabbed some of that to use also. So when you've got your transparency, your paper's all dry, you've got your negative printed out, you've got some things to use as little templates. I like to use it in a frame because when you pop, all the pieces down together because obviously it's loose it's just sitting on top of the paper if you've got an old frame lying around if you pop it into the frame the glass will hold everything down together so it's just a really easy way to keep everything in the one place and it's kind of like with collage in a way you can just move things around until you find the position that you want and then once you're happy with that you can pop the frame back together again and then your cyanotypes ready to develop. So cyanotypes were created in the mid 1800s and they're called cyanotypes because the pigment that develops is a really rich cyan and Prussian blue and they're so beautiful. So we pop our frame together and then that is ready to go out into the sun. So it was really overcast this day. So I thought I'd put it out for 10 minutes and just set a timer. 
And you can see already how the color of the solution has changed. So then when you open it back up, what you've got is a white negative space where you put placed the items and then the rest of the image will be blue. So you just need to wash that off and you don't need chemicals to develop this. All you do is need to rinse it with some water and hello Echo. Echo. <laughs> rinse it with some water a couple of times until it runs clear. So I would probably rinse it like two or three times. You don't need a lot of water and just use a tray or a plastic tub like I've got here. And you can see the color is the real, the rich blue is starting to come out of the image. So you can see how the parts that were exposed to the sun turn blue and everything else then goes back to the white of the paper. It's such a cool effect. And then all you need to do, because obviously your paper is very wet, is hang it up to dry. And that's why the little clips were included in the box. So I just decided to hang it up in my kitchen, just along the, like the blind string hook, hooky thing. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> And then, uh, so I did that one with uh, creating a negative and then I just thought I would grab some objects from around the house and do another one. So I had this lace and I thought I would try that and see what that looked like. And then I grabbed the rest of my leaves and started popping those on the paper as well. So this is the full A5 piece. And I didn't have a frame... Like I couldn't see one around that this would fit in that was free. So I thought I would show you that you can make it without using a frame. So I've just got it on a piece of cardboard or you can use like a any kind of board, something that's a little bit stiffer and then wrap it in plastic wrap just to keep everything secure. Now, obviously, this is not going to be as pressed down as the glass. So we're not going to get the sharpness that we did in the previous print. This one, the, the edges are going to be a bit more diffused of the items because it's not pressed down as hard. So there's lots of different effects you can get. And this is something I thought I would experiment with because I haven't done it one this way and you can see how the color is changing just from me working in the day I thought I would use some masking fluid and see how that would work and this was after that print had been out for 10 minutes so you can see how the edges are a lot more diffused on these and then our masking fluid experiment. So this worked quite well. I wasn't sure. So I might do some more prints with masking fluid. Rinse them off just like before. Two, three times until your water runs clear. And then hang them up to dry. So I love the way that it only exposes where you put the solution so you can see the brush strokes. I love seeing brush strokes in the artist's hand in pieces so I think I'm going to experiment some more with like the where I put the solution. Uh, this one is a little bit overexposed. You, you, we're not getting quite the amount of details in the face, but that could be the file issue as well. Uh, it was like a super small picture of her. So I'm definitely going to experiment some more with my live music photography and exposing like the shapes around it as well. This one exposed perfectly. So this was about 
10 minutes on an overcast day. This one was out a little bit longer and the color on this is incredible. And I love that we get this little ghostly lace. And like you saw, I didn't really flatten these down at all. So I think if I secured it a little bit more, we'd get a lot more of that detail coming through. This one with the masking fluid, the masking fluid did work very well, but I actually forgot about this while I was developing these. So this one is definitely a lot more overexposed. Um, I think you could still definitely use it for something, but this just goes to show that if the longer you leave it out under UV light, the more exposed it's going to get and you're going to lose that deep rich blue tone so we you know we had the same amount of solution on these but this was out probably twice the amount of time so if it's a bright sunny day you're probably only going to need maybe five to seven minutes to expose them uh and yeah but they're super cool and i love that you can use photography negatives as well i think this is more the thing I'm going to try and develop rather than the abstract shapes because this is sort of more my thing and we can also use the pens provided to add in you know whatever details I've seen cyanotypes where people get the veins from the leaves really showing through so I'd love to know how you do that and there's also a wet on wet technique where you can mix up a solution of dish liquid, I guess, or hand soap, mix it up with water so you get bubbles. And then if you put the bubbles down onto the page and then press the plastic wrap on top, you actually get like the bubbles onto your final piece. So... Let me know if you want me to do like another like a just cyanotype video where I go through a few more techniques, maybe develop more some of the photographs that I've taken um, and maybe do some mixed media with that because I could also use those paints from Box 49 uh, on top of these as well. I'm just running out of time this week <laughs> because I've got my market in a couple of days. So I'm just finalizing all of that. So it's all very exciting. I also tried out that gel pen that came in the box and it is so beautiful and shimmery. So nice. So thanks again for watching. Please consider subscribing if you like this kind of thing. I do have a playlist that is just unboxing art supply subscription boxes so if you like that i'll link the playlist up there so you can watch all of those and consider giving me a thumbs up if you liked this video and i want to thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time bye please subscribe. it